Okay, I, I think I'm ready to start. I think so. I apologize because I'm so all over the place right now. I got to the station and um, I had some technical issues and that kind of threw me off completely. But I hope I figure it out and I think we're doing good with time. But today, I think this episode is like extremely important to me because it is a women's month this month and and I do feel like I want to talk about it so if you're not willing to learn about the the history of women you can tune off but it's going to be your loss because we're going to talk about some badass women in history and if you want to learn history in a fun way well we're going to do that today um so let's see women's month damn I'm, so actually okay so uh those of you who know uh, march 8th is international women's month and then we have in america we have national women's month right i am so confused today i am so sorry uh <laughs> but yeah but actually it's not only in america because they also celebrate it in the uk in canada and australia um, and let me write that. Uh, let me let me be. Boo, boo, boo. Okay, so in Canada they actually celebrate it in October. So you know, let's give it to Canada. They still celebrate it because not every country celebrates a whole month of women. And I feel like it's it's really cool because we get to emphasize uh, in this month we get to emphasize a little bit more of like women-owned businesses and strong women that did so much for us today because if we look throughout history there are so many women that fought and sacrificed themselves and sometimes even their freedom uh, for us to be here today and uh, you know keep fighting for equality because we are far from equal still unfortunately but um but we're, we're we're doing it we're there we're almost there i hope hopefully uh, <laughs> <laughs> but to give you a little bit of a background, so uh, March 8th officially became an International Women's Day in 1911, which is insane. It's a really long time ago, which is, it's super, like, it's it's really cool. But um, um, only in 1987, the Congress passed a public law stating that March will be an official Women's History Month. So it took 80 years approximately, like 70 something years to actually make it official. But we got there. Uh, that's amazing, ladies. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really happy for us. Let's keep doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, so those of you who didn't uh, know about that, I hope you know now because uh, if you, well, all of you have women in your life. So whatever country you're in, I feel like it's worth mentioning and it worth saying like, hey, happy International Women's Day, mom, sister, daughter, girlfriend, wife, whoever it is in your life, you know, it's, uh, it's worth mentioning. Um, and um, I feel like also, um, unfortunately, because in history, uh, women were always a little bit, let's say, on the back end than guys. We have a lot of, we know a lot of famous names by, you know, men that did such great things for history. But I feel like many times we kind of bypass the amazing women that did so much for our history as well. And I do want to point this out and I do want to mention it. So um, it's going to be... It's going to be a really interesting episode because, um, well, to give you a little bit of like, you know, a breakdown. So for the next 10 to 15 minutes, we're going to do history lessons. And I'm going to read you a little bit about the strong, powerful, badass women that helped shape the world as it is today. Because I feel like they deserve to be talked about. Some of them are still alive some of them are not but I really 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 want to mention those names to you and it's a little bit so bear with me it's like the next 10 minutes if you really really don't care about it those of you who are watching me on YouTube you can skip those of you who are watching live well bear with me um, <laughs> and then after that we're gonna do a little music break and play some music by strong women 
Um, and after that, we're going to talk a little bit, but, well, because the show call is called um, Let's Talk New York. We're going to talk a little bit about job hunt in New York, which is a very interesting topic. And I feel like I get a lot of questions about it. And there was a question that somebody asked me on my Instagram two weeks ago about getting a job in New York as a musician or coming to America to be an artist, to be a musician. We can mention that as well. If you have any specific questions or specific requests, um, DM me uh, on Instagram and I'll, I'll read it and I'll try to answer it by the time that we ending the show. But we're going to talk about job hunt in New York. And then, as you know, we always have this like fun ending with national holidays and some recommendations of the week and maybe if I have enough time I'll read you a poem that I wrote recently so yeah we're gonna we're gonna see what's gonna happen it's a really freestyle show today because honestly I had a crazy week so I did plan everything out but again I got threw off because of technical issues and my head is just like like all over the place all over the place, so bear with me. I'm gonna do some history lesson now, um, and hopefully, we all get to learn something today, right? Because, like, every time you know how they say that the best way to learn something is to teach it. Well, while I was doing the research for you guys, just to read you about some really, really dope best women. I learned some things myself and I noticed that some of the names I did know, some of the names I didn't know. So um, again, those of you who are watching on YouTube, it's going to be on the screen so you can read it with me. Those of you who are listening, um, I'll try to be as clear as possible while I read it. But, you know, it's going to be fun. Okay, so the first woman that I want to mention is Harriet Tubman. Uh, she was born into slavery in Maryland in 18, 1822 and endured physical abuse and left her with the scars for the rest of her life. At the age of 27, she escaped slavery through the Underground Railroad and served as a conductor on the railroad as well as the Union spy during the Civil War. That's fucking cool. Celebrated as a prominent figure in an abolitionist movement. Dubman's fearless helped countless individuals escape slavery and death. Wow. Well, that's, that's really dope. That's really dope. I really, if you want to know more, I, I will link the, the websites on my YouTube channel. Then you can go and read it for yourself. But because I'm basically, because I have so many women, I couldn't put all of them. And I can't obviously read the entire history of what they did. But it's so, it's worth knowing those names. And I think it's, it's. It's really inspiring how these women helped and fought um, for these things. So the next one would be Susan B. Anthony. It's, uh, she is a woman's rights activist and American social reformer. Susan B. Anthony played a critical role in the women's suffrage movement, helping the lead, to lead the way for women to vote. She was also a New York State agent for the American Anti-Slavery Society and a co-founder of the Women's Suffrage Association. She spent her entire life fighting for women to have an equal vo voice and equal rights. Damn. The next one, probably you probably heard this name also, Marie Curie. Um, so she did not leave science to men. Instead, the Polish scientists work led to the discovery of two new elements, polonium and radium, and championed to use radiation in medicine. She became the first woman to win the Nobel Prize in 1903. And she won again in 1911 in chemistry. Damn. So for somebody who's like so far away from science, I, it's, I, I have such admiration for women who do do science because I, I do know it's such a male dominated industry and i know it's harder for women to get involved in science especially when it comes to like these amazing revelations and like winning nobel prizes and these amazing achievements and i feel like again we know so many of the male names that sometimes we just we forget to credit the women that did such amazing job and that's what i'm doing today so 
The fourth one, it's Eleanor Roosevelt. When her husband, FDR, took office, Eleanor didn't just stand by. She dramatically changed the role of the first lady, advocating for human rights, women's rights, and children's causes. She went on and became chair of the UN Human Rights Commission in 1945. Amazing. Oh, that's okay. That's one of my favorite ones. Rosa Parks. Back in the 50s, the rule of, sorry, uh, the rule in uh, Montgomery, Alabama, uh, was that in, when the bus became full, the seats in the front would be given to the white passengers. Parks, a leader in the local NAACP and the civil rights movement, iconically refused to give up her seat. Her willingness to disobey the rule helped to spark the Montgomery boycott bi and other efforts to end segregation in America. So this is a really, really famous story. So those of you who never heard of Rosa Parks, um, she's my personal favorite. So <laughs> I think she's a badass, honestly. Um, so definitely worth reading about her. Uh, okay. Next one, we have Rosalind Franklin. We, we can thank British scientists, uh -huh, another scientist, Rosalind Franklin, uh, for much of what we know of DNA today. Using X-ray diff diffraction methods, she discovered DNA density and, more importantly, its molecular structure. Did you know DNA was discovered by a woman? I'm sure, like, 95% of people don't know that. I mean, maybe like, you know, women and science, obviously, because you learn these things. But like, I feel like people just, they just don't know, you know? And I, I, well, I discovered, I didn't know, know that. Not that. I never studied, you know, DNA and science. But when I read about like the fact that the woman discovered it, I was like, damn, badass, amazing. Ooh, another one of my favorites, Maya Angelou. And because, well... Oh, she's awesome. Okay, Maya Angelou. <laughs> she's, such a, she's such an amazing writer, you guys. And me as a writer, as a poet, as somebody who, who like, you know, I love literature. Oh, Maya Angelou. Wow, okay. Maya Angelou was a poet, singer, and civil rights activist whose 1969 autobiography, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, made lit literature history at the first nonfiction bestseller for an African-American woman. During her life, she wrote over 36 books, including several collections of poetry, and recited one of her poems at President Bill Clinton, 1993, in inaugural ceremony. That is so cool. Maya Angelou was like a really, like she's a big name. She's, she's awesome. I read a few of her poems, and wow, she's, a, she's such an inspiration, honestly. Okay, I hope you're still with me. I hope you're still with me. We have a few more. We have, I mean, we have so many more. I'm, I'm, I can't read you all of them because it's, it's, it's so much. But um, I will read you the rest of the ones that I wrote here that I feel like worth um, talking about. Well, everyone is worth talking about. That's not like, no. But, you know, I just chose a few, also a few of my personal inspirations and a few of, that I never heard of that I felt like, maybe you didn't heard of as well. So let's, you know, let's talk about them. Let's find out together. Okay. The other one is Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, as a second woman to serve in the U.S. Supreme Court, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a pioneer for women's right and gender equality. Next one, Angela Davis. Known for her progressive politics and work to abolish prisons, scholar and activist, Angela Davis was um, has been at the forefront of lef leftist causes, including the feminist movement, the Black Panther Party, and the anti-war effort for over half a century. Sally Ride. Ride became the first American woman to travel to space on the shuttle Challenger in 1983. The astrophysicist and Stanford grad, grad beat out at least a thousand other applicants for a spot in the NASA astronaut program. Women astronauts, yes! Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, the next one, I, I hope I'm saying her name right. Malala Yousafzai. Okay, I hope I said it right. Yousafzai survived a gunshot wound to the face by the Taliban and 
her and has since became a spokesperson for human rights, education, and women's rights. In 2014, she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. She's still here today. She's still doing all those things. So again, I hope I said the name right. But it's Malala Yousafzai. A gunshot to the face, you guys. This is insane. That's... Wow. Sorry, I'm like shocked. <laughs> I read this already, but like every time I read it, it's like, oh my God. Uh, okay, I'm excited. Okay, next on the list. Oh, it's the last one. Oh, that was fast. Okay. Jane Austen. Um, you can thank J Jane Austen for basically creating the wrong con books you love, you love to read. In her teenage years, during the early eight. 1810s, she started writing her most famous novels like Pride and Prejustice and Sense and Sensibility. She didn't even get her credit for her novels until after her death, when her brother Henry publicly announced she was the author. Even today, the themes of her works are, and literally devices still hold up. So yeah, rom-com was invented by, invented by a woman. I'm so proud of us ladies. Oh my God. So, okay. I, th there were so many more names on the list. I was reading and I was going on the list and I was like, oh my God, I want this and this and this and this. But again, this is not a history podcast. I'm just trying to bring a little bit of what I can into that. And hopefully um, I learned a lot when I was preparing for this podcast, for this, for this episode specifically. And hopefully you learned a little bit something too. And again, if you're watching on YouTube, for those of you who are watching, uh, this show on YouTube, I will link um, the websites that I took the information from in the comment section. And then you can read a little more and you can read about other women because we have so many women that deserve to to, to be talked about, you know, and I, I, it's not even like, I don't know, I feel like it's nothing, you know, like there's so many more. But um, I'm glad we went over that. If you have a favorite one, let me know in the comments and write to me if you have somebody that you want to mention. Please let me know because I am, while I'm on the episode, I'm still on Instagram, so you can still write me and I'll get the notification and we'll talk about it. But, ah, uh, damn, Women's Month. This is exciting, you guys. I have a lot of conversation, conversations with people about the topic and I feel like, Again, it's uh, like I mentioned last month. Last month was uh, was um, uh, Black History Month, and this month is Women History Month. Um, we'll see what's gonna happen next month. But um, I feel like the point of the month is because we need to remember that all the time, right? Like we need to respect women. We need to respect black people. We need to respect all people, all kinds, all the time, every time. It's like it's the same thing that I was talking about Valentine's Day. It's not just one day to love. That's not the point. You love all the time. You respect all the time. You remember all the time. But I feel like in these months, there is like an emphasis of, on that. And this month give a little bit more voice, a little bit more information for those who just didn't know. Again, I come from, I was born in Russia, I grew up in Israel. We don't have Black History Month, not in Russia, not in Israel. Uh, we do have um, March 8th as in, because it's international. I feel like everyone celebrates it, but we don't have a whole month to talk about this. And I feel like it gives a little bit more space just to learn, just to dig in into that. And I don't know, me personally, I just, I love reading, I love learning, and I feel like this podcast give me a little bit more room to actually learn things, because every other week that I'm preparing for a show, I'm, I'm researching, and I'm like, okay, what do I want to talk about today? What can I benefit you, you know, with? And I'm learning, and I'm exploring, and I, I just, I don't know, I just, I love learning, and I feel like there's so much to learn. There's just not enough, not enough time in the world to learn everything. But at least I have the opportunity every two weeks to explore new topics and to learn about these amazing women, you know, and about different cultures and different uh, things that happened. Um, and I'm, I'm honestly, I'm really, really grateful. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna take a little break just for me to. I don't know. I feel like I, I, I feel like I'm all over the place. I had a, like my day started. Uh, 
MTA. I don't know. We're gonna talk about in one of the episodes about living in New York, but you guys, my morning was just bah. I was trying to get to school because I'm in college as well, and I had this class in the morning from 9.15 to 10.15. I left home on time. I was supposed to be in class on time. So I got to the station. And I took the, I needed to switch. So I took my subway and then I was waiting and I just missed the other subway because, you know, I need to switch platforms. So I got there and it says that I have a a subway in five minutes. So I'm waiting these five minutes. I finally get on the subway. I'm already like a little bit late. I get on the subway and then thank God that I heard it because I'm usually wearing my headphones. I didn't even hear it. Um, and I get on the subway and we pass a few stations. And then I like I, I noticed that the, the subway doors, they, they don't close. And like there is like, I don't know, some like I hear some voices and I remove my headphone for a second. And I hear like this train does not go to whatever I needed to go. You know, like you can switch to the R train and go to Queens Plaza. And I'm, and then I see and I'm like, OK, this is the R train. And I see that the R train is just waiting on the other side with the doors open. And I'm like, OK, I guess I'm switching to this one. So not even thinking like I just jumped out, you know, and then to the uh, from the end to the R because it, it goes to where I need to go as well. And then the doors closed <laughs> and then I realized I'm going to the other side. So I basically went back to the station that I left just a few minutes ago and then I'm like, fuck, and I'm always like, I can't believe this is happening. So we go back to the station that I was initially at, right? And then I see the R that I actually need to take on the other side that I need to cross, leaving. So I'm just like, come on, and my class already started, and I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. So I cross all the way to the other, to the other side of the other platform. I wait another five minutes. The next R is arriving, and of course, it's crawling. It's barely moving, and I'm like, oh my god, this is an hour class, and I'm a 20 minute late already. Like, what, what is the point to even like, showing up to this class? Well, but I was like, I'm already out. I'm not going to go back home now because after school I have like I need to go straight here to the radio. And I'm like, I'm not going to just go back home, sit there for an hour and just, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So I was like, let me make it to school. So I finally got got to Queens Plaza and I finally got to class 30 minutes late just to sit there for another 30 minutes doing like writing a poem because it's a creative writing class. So at least like. I did something, you know, and like got some information on the class and helped another student because she was so lost with her poetry. And I'm just like, let me let me help a little bit. Um, So I like I felt like it was a productive half an hour. But still, like, you know, like when you're so late and you just and nothing and when you're late, this is like nothing works out. Nothing. You're going to get into traffic. You're going to get all the red lights. Your subway is going to break down. There's going to be a bad signal. So it's going to stop. It's just everything, and I hate being late. I'm like always on time. So for me, being late is just like ugh, I hate it. I hate it. It gives me anxiety. Uh, but I got to class. Everything's fine. Uh, the teacher wasn't too upset. Hopefully, you know. Um, but it's okay. And now I'm here. And actually, after that, I'm running to another radio show in which I'm the guest. So that's gonna be cool. So I have a long ass day. But that's gonna be fun. Um, but anyway. I'm glad that I got to cover a little bit of Women's History Month because it's a very important topic for me as a feminist, as a woman. Um, (laughs) You know, you know, you know these things. Anyway, we're going to play some dope ass music that I'm going to find. There's one song that I really want to play you because I think it's so cool. Um, um, It's a taking i think it's called taking everything it's a really funny one um damn i can't find okay that's gonna be the next song i'm gonna gonna find it but for now let me just play some other things i don't know if you know but there's an artist that i really really liked the one that i was playing right before i started the show her name is amicella and she's canadian she's pretty underground she's not very well known which i don't know why because i think she's really dope um so i'm gonna play you a little bit of her music because i think she deserves it i think she's awesome i'm probably gonna send her that on instagram because because we actually talked a few times on instagram anyway let's see let's see let's see Mm -mm -mm. 
oh, let's play this song. This is the song that made me start listening to her. I, I don't know how I found it, but like, yeah, I think it's really cool. Anyway, 15 minute music break, enjoy. Damn, what a perfect timing. We're back on air. Let me turn this Zoom. Uh, zoom. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, I told you I need to focus, and apparently I am not. I have no idea what's going on with my brain today. But we're back on air. We're back on YouTube. We're back here. All this, wow, there's so many screens here, guys. You have no idea. But we're back. Um, <laughs> Anyway, that was Biggity Biggity, that's my song. It has a dope-ass music video, and those of you who don't know how to listen to lyrics, you won't get it. But let's move on, and uh, we're moving on to our next topic, which is a job hunt in NYC. Okay, so first of all, let me tell you that. I, uh, I'm a freelancer, so... It's a little different for me, uh, but uh, I do know a few things and I, I'm, I can't really tell you how to find a job office and where to find it because I feel like, you know, it's, it's, it, it varies from office to office, but I do have a few tips that uh, will definitely help you to come here because um, for example, New York culture is very different from LA culture. Somebody who used to live in LA for two years and I did look for a job there and I did a lot of networking there and I wasn't a freelancer there. I was just a student. Um, I'm a freelancer here in New York, but there is so much that we can talk about because I do see people make so many mistakes that I'm going to mention to you. So I'm not necessarily going to tell you exactly what to do, but I'm going to definitely and for sure tell you what not to do because some things, even for me that I'm not like a native New Yorker, even like some things are just like, what are you, what are you doing? Anyway, anyway, it's going to be a fun episode. I have so much to talk about. Um, okay, finding a job. So first of all, um, let me, before I forget, because I promised last time and I forgot, um, somebody asked me on Instagram, um, how, how do you come to the U.S. as a drummer? Um, how do you find a job as a drummer in the U.S. legally? Um, so... <laughs> This is a very interesting question. I feel like, again, I'm not an immigration officer. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not like, I, I can't really give advice regarding that. But as an immigrant in America, I can definitely give you a few tips that can help you out. So if you're an artist and you're looking to come to work as a musician, as an artist in the U.S., um, there are a few ways that you can do it. I feel one way is come here for school like I did because after you go here for school you get a student visa after a student visa you get your OPT which is I don't remember the acronym but like uh, OPT is uh, basically a, a visa that you, like a work permission that you get after you graduate for one year to work in your field of study so if you come here to study music or theater or photography or drawing or like art um, Honestly, whatever you choose to study, you get one year after you graduate to legally work in the United States. Um, after that, uh, what most people do is they apply for an artist visa. So after you worked here for a year and you lived here for a few years now, right, because you're a student, you apply for an artist visa, um, it's not easy to get an artist visa because you need a lot of uh, you need to show a lot for yourself. So if you basically were just sitting in your basement releasing music to SoundCloud, that's just not enough. You need to be um, a recognized artist, whether in your country or in America or both, which is even better. But um, that's definitely like, you, you can read more about the O1 visa because it's hard to get. It's not like, it's not, well, it's not that difficult, but you need to be a real artist. You can't just, decide to come to the United States and be like oh let me like release a few songs and then get my artists like that's just not how it goes um so again back to your question a uh, drummer if you don't want to go through the whole process of studying because you already you know got your, whatever you need like your bachelor's or, or whatever you can always try artist visa from your country and if you have everything that it you know, that they require, you can still apply. You just need to find an employer here in the United States who, who you will work for. Um, or another way can be 
a work visa. So if you can find a job specifically with, with one employer and they can prove that you're so freaking special to come here that they need to have you here in the United States to work as a musician, that's also a way. So basically, it is possible. It is a hard path to go on if that's, you know, like it's, it's not easy. But what I would recommend first, if you've never been here before, if you never tried, I would recommend first to come visit, play for free, go to some venues, go to some events, meet other musicians, talk to other people, come here as a tourist, just see how it is, see how the music scene is here, because not everywhere, like the, the music scene is very different from LA to Nashville to New York to Texas, like there is, the, the, it, it changes, it's different, so Again, you as a drummer, I don't know what style you play. If you um, look for something, if you're looking for something specific, but I feel like before you do all this crazy road to like getting your visas, you know, and like all your documents and everything, I feel like just come first and see how it is and explore and try. Especially in New York, New York is not for everyone. Um, it's not an easy place to live in. <laughs> so. You know, just um, come explore first. Like I had a friend visiting me. She literally left yesterday, but she was visiting me for a week and a half. Uh, she was thinking about moving here, but she was like, let me come here first and try and see how it is to be here, to be in New York, to live here, you know, just to, so she didn't experience the living thing, you know, right? Because she was staying with me and she was like, she, she wasn't working. She wasn't like hustling, you know, she was mostly like traveling, exploring. But she fell in love with New York. And she's like, I'm going back in the summer just to be here a little bit more, um, just to get to know the city a little bit better. And I feel like New York is definitely one of those cities that you just visit before you decide to move. It's not easy. You need to be ready for it. If you're ready to work hard and live a crazy life, then definitely, yeah, but definitely not for everyone. I know a lot of people who in New York just like, uh-uh, nah, too hard, too noisy, too expensive, too that, too that, blah, blah, blah. they find so many ways to to describe New York as a bad city, um, and it's just not for them, you know, because I feel like people who love New York, we ignore all the other things, you know, we ignore all the like, oh, it's so expensive and dirty sometimes, and the rats, and the freak subway system but I I still love it you know but I I did visit here before I actually came here I visit and I I visited here before I before COVID and I just fell freaking in love in this city but anyway so I hope that answers the question about being an artist in New York so you know student visa work visa artist visa you know one of those definitely an option for artists specifically. And if you if you want to go into detail, I can definitely help you a little bit more. You can ask me on Instagram because you did ask this question on Instagram. So we can go a little bit more into details if it's something that you are interested in. Uh, but let's talk a little bit more about uh, finding a job, like let's say more regular job. Um, so depends on what you're looking for. If there is something that I want to say like before I even like start talking about it. New York is a city with a lot of competition. There is a lot of people who come here to do what you came here to do. So I feel like, and again, because we're in New York and it's such a hard, live it, uh, a hard city to live in already, the people who come here are pretty driven to succeed and to do what it takes to do you know, to win, to, to get what they need to get. And I feel like some people would come here expecting that they're just going to apply for a job, have a cool-ass resume, um, and they're just going to get it. And that's just unfortunately not how it works. Um, a lot of people... <laughs> it's funny because a lot of people get angry about it, but it's just how life works, how the world works these days. And I've seen it every freaking where but it's all about people and it's all about connections even if you have the dopest freaking resume in the world if you don't know anyone and you're just applying to an office just hoping you know they will yeah i mean you can get an interview but if somebody next to you knows somebody or met somebody in an event and they personally spoke to them 
they would likely get the job if they qualified, obviously, but they will probably get the job. So it is a city of connections. It's a world of connections. Honestly, again, I've seen it everywhere and even in the military when people are just like oh her dad and his mom and you know just like well freaking yes that's <laughs> just unfortunately that's how it works you know and like i feel like if you have imagine you're the manager and you have two employees that both qualify for the position right both have the same talent the same like work experience they both want the same salary both can work the same amount of hours everything is the same but this person, you just saw them in the interview. You never heard of them before. And then the other person is somebody who you actually met or somebody else knows and you were rec and they were recommended to you. You know, somebody threw like a word, you know, and they were like, oh, yeah, you ha I have this I have this friend and she does that and that. And, you know, they're really good at this. So, like, you should ch you should see and talk to them and speak to them and see if they fit. Yeah, that, that this person will take the position. There's like, it's just, ugh, that's how the world works. And I feel like the sooner you will understand that, the easier it will be. Now, that being said, you're probably thinking, but I don't know anyone. I come first to the city and I just, I don't know many people. Duh, obviously you don't. That's how we all come to the city. Nobody freaking knows nobody. But that's why I feel like New York is one of the, most amazing city is to actually meet people because unlike in LA you can meet a person at a bar not for dating just to meet somebody you can meet people freaking everywhere I met people in bars I met people in supermarkets I met people on the street in my uh, kickboxing class uh, networking events parties Facebook Instagram galleries, music shows, open mics, poetry nights, social clubs, meetups, photographers, networking with other photographers, I'm everywhere. I met people everywhere. And I feel like, and I know people like that, they come to the city and all they do is just resume, like sending their resumes over and over and over and over again to so many companies, but they never actually leave the house to make an effort to meet real people. My roommate got her job through going out and meeting people. She met a person who recommended her to this person who was working there. And it took her time, but she did it, you know. But I also know people who are just like sending resumes, like cold emails to companies. And they're like, oh, I'm not getting any answers. Obviously, don't get any answers because people who actually do the extra effort go the extra mile to actually get to know the people they want to work with that that's that's giving them a different result and um i'll give you a really really good way to start that's how i started that's how i introduce myself to people because obviously i mean you can send cold emails i mean maybe one out of a hundred will work yeah that can happen you can do instagram you can do you can try facebook like yeah that works i do facebook facebook works amazingly for me with Facebook groups. I met a lot of people through Facebook. Some of them became friends. Some of them were creeps. Um, <laughs> but, but I did meet a lot of people. Um, but I feel like the best, best, best way, you have two options. One option will be meetup.com. And you go to that site and you're looking for people with mutual interests and find meetups in your sphere, whether it's tech or entrepreneurship, artists, photographers, comedians, or like workout sessions, yoga sessions. Uh, they have every everything, honestly. They have everything. You can just find it. So it's meetup.com. It's a really great website to start with. It's mostly free. If it's not free, they will send you to the other website that I want to recommend you, which is Eventbrite. Because on Eventbrite, you also have a lot of events that are networking events, collaboration events, photographers meeting models, meeting designers, meeting makeup artists, musicians wanting to jam together. And there is an event about it on Eventbrite. So you go there and you meet your people. A lot of tech events, a lot. If you're in tech, a lot of tech events. Um, a few days ago, I actually went to an event that it's solely about networking. It's not about dating. It's not about meeting friends. I mean, you could, and I met a friend there, which is awesome. 
but it's about networking specifically. So me as a musician and a photographer, these are the places I go to. I'll go to jam sessions, which I'm not, I don't jam like a lot, but I do go to like poetry events and I meet people there and then I get invited. And then the people I meet there invite me to their own events or to perform or to be featured. Right. And then I go to photography walks, you know, like around the city and I meet this photographer and they tell me, oh, I'm doing this gallery and I'm missing a photographer. Like, let me find, you know, and then I go and I have an exhibit and it's a true story. Like, I'm not lying. <laughs> it actually happened. I went to an open mic night to a poetry night. And then somebody was like, oh, I'm doing an exhibit, a gallery. We're looking for some female artists that want to be featured. And I'm like, me, I want to do it. And then I went to this event and I had my own wall of my own work. And then at this event, I also met other people um, that later I met an event owner who later told me that he wants me to perform at his bar. You know, so I'm like, yeah, that's how it works in New York. Two days ago, I went to a networking event and I met a marketing and branding person that does it for musicians, for music artists. And I told him who I was. He listened to my music and he told me, I have a producer for you. And literally an hour ago, he connected me with this producer so we can work together on some new stuff. I went, I did it. I put in the work. I wasn't just sitting at home doing my... Instagram, scrolling TikTok, watching TV and sitting and thinking like, oh, but nobody answers my emails. Obviously, that's not how it works. You need to go out there. You need to be out there. And if you're in New York, this is the perfect freaking city to do that because you have so much. You have so many opportunities. You have so much to do here. And it's, uh, I feel like if you came here to work, if you came here to like hustle, You'll make it happen. It will happen for you. I, I found so many opportunities here. And I know like sometimes, of course, we all have our days when we just, we can't, you know, social anxiety or like too much on our minds. And sometimes you don't want to go out. Sometimes you don't want to talk to people. Sometimes you don't want to put in the work. It's fine to take those days off. Sometimes I'm not in a mood and I'm like, just leave me the fuck alone. I don't want to talk to anyone. That's fine. Those days I concentrate on my writing, on my work, on posting, or you know what? Just fucking laying in my bed and watching TV. I do that too. We do that in New York as well. We all have Netflix. That's also fine. But as long as it's like one day a week, two days a week, maybe like you have a week that you're just off. You're just, you're just out of it. You can't. Fine. Okay. But if that's all you came here to do, just like lying in bed, watching Netflix while you're sending your resume on LinkedIn to some company that got 200 other applications, forget it. You know, it's just, it's not going to happen. Like maybe if you're like extremely, extremely lucky, but otherwise like you need to get out there and you need to spread the word about yourself. You need to go to these events. You need to introduce yourself to people. If you have social anxiety, if it's hard for you to talk to people, which like I know you probably won't believe me, but I, like, I'm a shy person. Like, it, it's not easy. Like, depends where I am. It depends, like, what's the vibe and what's the situation, who are the people, what's, like, my, you know, my mood of the day. But I can be very introverted and very shy, and it's really hard for me to come to the... And I go to these events alone all the time. Because if you go with a friend, you're going to be stuck with this friend. You're not going to talk to other people. But if you're alone you will be forced to talk to other people. And you know what? I'll tell you something. So the other day I went to this, to this event and I was not in the mood. Like I was in the mood, but I was like really shy that day. Like I just, I, I didn't know what to do. So I was like, I, I, ordered, <laughs> I ordered a beer and I was sitting at the bar, just like staring at the bottle. Like I just, I didn't know what to do. I was like, I don't know where to start. Cause I got there late and everyone was already like, you know, having conversation. Um, and I was really lost. So I sat at the bar for like 10 minutes until this girl came to me and she was like, why are you sitting here alone? And she just took me and like started introducing me to people. And then she was like, you're good. You're good. Okay, cool. <laughs> and, and, and that's it. And then she, she, she left, you know, like to, to do her thing. And I was just standing there with a group of people that I la- later met at another event. And they were like, oh, we remember you from that event and that event. Because once I opened up and she introduced me to some people, it happened. I just started talking. I met some people. I got involved in some groups. And it happened. So I feel like even if you come to these events and you don't know how to talk to people and you're very lost and you're like, I don't know how to start a conversation, people might come to you. Just, of course, don't 
don't sit there like you know closed off and you know look at people communicate with your eyes in the beginning people will come talk to you or if you really really don't know what to do take a friend with you take but take a friend that the whole purpose of this you know of the friend coming with you is to push you forward to meet other people so I would really recommend you to look at some uh, events on Meetup and Eventbrite uh, for businesses, for tech, for like depends on what industry you're at. Just start going to these places. Just start all the time. Start communicating with people. Start meeting people. And one thing that I will say that is my personal favorite advice because it's something that I experience a lot and I just hate when people do that. I hate when people do it. But um <laughs> I'll tell you a story and then I'll continue. So <laughs> I went to this event and it's called Speed Networking, right? It's like it's an amazing event. I love it. I, I went a few days ago, I went the other time, like the second time. Uh because the first time I actually met I made a friend. Like I and, and I again because I'm a photographer, I feel like everyone needs a photographer, no matter in what industry you're at. And I actually got some calls, which is amazing. Like I got some clients out of that, which is awesome. That's exactly what I needed. And I got a friend, which is awesome. So I was like, okay. So I saw they do another event and I went. But at the first event, oh my god, guys, this was so funny. There was a girl and she came with a resume, a paper resume, and her cards. And she was sitting at the table. You know, speed work, speed networking is like, I, I, I guess it's like speed dating for those of you who know what speed dating is. It's basically you have five minutes and you move around tables and you just introduce yourself to everyone and you have like a specific amount of time and then you move to another table, another table, another table. So this is speed networking. So it's the same thing, but you only talk business. You're not like, oh, what's your favorite car? Like nobody cares. So you're just like, what do you do? That's, that's the whole point. It's like, how can I help you? How can you help me? And that's, you know, and you exchange details, whether it's relevant or not. After five minutes, you move. So I come to this table and the girl is sitting and she is desperate as fuck to find a job. She came with a whole stock of documents and references. And I'm like, holy damn. And now I can't, like, I'm not going to hire her. Like, I'm a photographer. I'm just like, there's nothing I can do. But she's sitting in front of me and she's like, and she's like, do you know anyone who's hiring? So I'm good at this. And that's what I do. And this is, and I'm like, chill, dude. Oh my God. This is not how you network. No. So why am I telling you this story? Because th that's a huge turnoff. I feel like. People, I mean, it is a networking event, yes, but nobody fucking knows you yet, right? Like, you can't go to these events and just, like, shove your resume at people and be like, hire me, hire me, hire me. Pfft, no, they will just not look at you or, or, like, talk to you ever again because you're a freaking weirdo. Like, n people don't do that. And I feel like especially... In New York, it's very straightforward of, like, get the fuck away from me because you're weird. <laughs> um... What I, I, well, I, yeah, for me, it's like, I just, I hate it. And I, I feel like I learned this lesson when I was in LA. I had a business class and my teacher, the first day of class, my teachers come, my teacher comes inside class and he was like, let me teach you one freaking thing. The class was like about networking. I think it was called like something, you know, networking or I don't remember anymore. But the first lesson, and I feel, I feel like it's the only lesson I learned in this class, and, but it's like very important. But he was like, when you go and you meet people and you interact with people, the last thing you want to think about is how they can help you and what you can take from them. Absolutely not. If you go to a networking event, if you meet people anywhere, doesn't matter where, the first thing that needs to be on your mind is how can I help them? How can I be a service to them and not and just stop thinking about yourself for a second? Because I feel like the best way to network is just to give from yourself to other people. And I am I feel like this is a lesson that I hold with myself and I just everywhere I go, this is what I think. It's like let me forget about my needs for a second because there is another person standing here. And I feel like the most valuable thing for them is to know that I'm not here to use them, you know, and I'm not here to just like take from them and I can actually give something to them. And that's and again, I'm not 
for me, I'm not even doing it as a, like it became such a natural thing to me everywhere I go that I, I never ask people for anything, especially not in the first interaction. I can ask like, I can ask for advice or something, right? Just like if somebody tells me they're like, I don't know, a Broadway actor. I was like, holy fuck, like tell me how you did it. Like, tell me your story, you know? But I'm not gonna be like, oh my God, can you connect me to, to this person? You probably know, like, no. My first thing to tell them would be like, if you ever need photos, if you ever need something, I'm here. I can do that and that and that and that. Like, this is how I can help you. Let me know, you know? Like, this is what I'm going to tell them. I'm not going to try and take things from them. And I feel like a lot of people do this mistake. I had a guy... <laughs> I had a guy asking me in a networking event in the end of the conversation. We talked. We talked. And then in the end, he was like, where do you live? I was like, Upper East. He's like can I sleep at your place today? <laughs> I was like, what? What the? How? How do you? How do you even dare asking this question in a networking event from a person you never met before in your life? These are things that like, I feel like they're so, to me, it's so natural, but I guess not for everyone. I guess not all people think that it's weird. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, if you're going to network, Again, if you just, you know, my word, of, my piece of advice is just like, see how you can help other people, see how you can contribute to them. So if you go into a networking event and you have absolutely nothing to offer, you won't get anything back. You, you like, it's just not going to happen. If you just come there to use other people for your own good, or if you just like not even listening to what they have to say and you're just like, are you going to hire me? Are you going to hire me? Can you, can you help me? Can you? You're not going to get any, like... People see through that so fast, through this fakeness, through this like lack of interest at all. Like if I talk to a person and I don't, and I, I can see immediately if they're not listening to me, if they're like only thinking about like, okay, I lost interest because you can't contribute me in any way. I'm like, yeah, I hear yeah. <laughs> like I, I feel it immediately. And I feel like this is a, immediately, like it's such a turnoff everywhere. It's just like people people don't like people like that you know so like I guess what I'm trying to say is the best way to network is just create real connections take real interest in people and even if you're talking to a person that you think is let me the quote-unquote irrelevant to you or to your industry first of all you never know secondly you're still talking to a person you still made the effort to come out of bed come to this networking event get out of your comfort zone and talk to people that you don't know Take an interest. Ask them something. I am a big believer in you can learn something from anyone. So just take it, you know, ask questions. Even I have people sometimes, like the last time that I went to an event, I was talking to, like, I was talking to some finance people, you know, some people like th that in tech that obviously we have five minutes now. We already realize that we have nothing in common industry-wise. So we can talk about our things. We can talk about the city or like one time I was talking to a guy about having a dog in a city because I have a dog in the city and he had a dog in the city. And we we're like, okay, we have nothing in common industry wise, but we can talk about dogs. Like what, you know, let's, let's do something, you know, you can. And then like, I learned something about, you know, what vet is the best to go to, what, what pet insurance to get, you know, just come open minded to these events and just learn and explore and experience the conversation and just be genuinely interested in the other person and be respectful to them and not, don't just come looking for things to take. I feel like this is the best that I can give you. And I also know that um, um, LinkedIn is very, very big, depending on your industry and what you're looking for. But LinkedIn is a big deal. And um, so I would recommend that if you are specifically, especially if you're not like an artist and you're actually looking for like office job and you have like specific, you know, like you do specific um, things that are more like LinkedIn, you know, because I, I don't have much to do in LinkedIn. I'm an artist. That's more like business oriented platform. But if you are in business, definitely arrange your LinkedIn page to look awesome. If you need headshots, I'm here for you. <laughs> if you need headshots for your LinkedIn, that's, a, just, that's something I do. I can definitely help you. If you have, um, what time it is? I've been blobbing for a while. Oh, half an hour. Nice. 
Um, yeah, definitely. So get your LinkedIn in order. If you are an artist, have a good portfolio. Have a good thing to show for yourself, whether it's your Instagram or your website or whatever it is that you're doing, because you don't want to, the last thing you want is to come to a networking event and don't have nothing to show for yourself. It's just like, oh, I just, I just started out. I have nothing to show, but this is what I was thinking of doing. And it's just like, ah, you lost the person immediately, immediately. And I feel like the thing with that is just it comes with experience. I've been to a lot of these events and even now I'm a little bit shy sometimes, but it takes some time. So like just use those tips, like just gather them together, start going to these places. If Again, if you need recommendations, like personal recommendations, you can always hit me up on Instagram. It's simply Vika. This is my Instagram. Uh, it's also on the page of Newtown Radio. It's also on YouTube. You can fi- just Google it, whatever. It's everywhere. And just DM me and I'll give you the websites and I'll give you the tips and I'll like, I'll help you. I'll take you with me to some of the events if you're ready, but also don't put a lot of pressure on it because I feel like, you know, it takes time to get used to networking and to meeting people. And especially those of you who come from outside of New York, from like smaller towns or like even different countries, um, different cultures communicate differently. I know that in LA, if I go to a bar alone in LA, I'll probably just like sit there alone. If I go to a bar alone in New York, I'll meet somebody. And I usually do. Like, again, not dating. I mean, you you could if I would have looked for that. But I'm looking just for like simple connections for friends, like communicate with people. And I actually, it works for me and I meet people. So um, definitely it's it's something to, to... that takes time to get used to, that you actually can talk to people on the street, in a supermarket, in a bar, networking events, take it easy. Don't put too much pressure on yourself if your first time or second time or third time didn't work out and it didn't go as planned. Just, you know, make adjustments, but keep going, keep pushing, keep doing that. Um, And that's about how how to get hired. If you're a freelancer, networking events, definitely work definitely a great idea but if you're a freelancer there are a few more things that you need to be doing you definitely need to go out there a lot a lot it's not about emails it's not about sending resumes right you just need to meet people and you always need to spread the word but there are so many events here as well that you can use that you can go to like I mentioned I'm going to open mics photography sessions I go to gem sessions I go to shows I go everywhere, I do it all, I'm always out, I'm always connecting with people, I met so many people these past few months since I started like taking it seriously and actually going out, introducing myself, Um, and again, not in a pushy way, I'm not walking around the street and being like, I'm a photographer, I'm a photographer, take my car, take, no, but like, you know, I mention it if I'm out and people ask me, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm a photographer, that's what I do, and they're like, oh, cool, can I see your work? And then two months after, they're like, hey, I need a photographer. (laughs) And that's me, you know, but that's how it happens. You don't need to push it, but you do need to be out there, especially in New York, because personal connections are so much stronger than anything you can do on Instagram or Facebook. Of course, post, keep posting on Instagram, keep, keep building your portfolio, keep posting on Facebook. There are a lot of valuable Facebook groups and WhatsApp groups nowadays that can actually help you get a job. I got a few jobs out of Facebook and Instagram. I I have I'm not saying that it's a bad thing I'm just saying if you combine it like your online presence together with going out and meeting real people this is so much more powerful and you can actually make that happen and again there is a lot of competition but also remember that not all people are a real competition right because a lot of people if you're using the advice that I gave you now you're already ahead of the competition because a lot of these freelancers, a lot of these people who are looking to get hired are going to be sending those cold emails, are going to be sitting at home wondering like, why can't I get anything? Well, because you're sitting at home, right? So you are already, if you're going out, you're hustling, you're doing it, you're meeting people in person, you're already ahead of the competition, you're already moving forward. It's going to take time. I just don't come to me after two weeks and be like, that's not working. It's not going to work in two weeks. Again, if you're like, maybe you're extremely freaking lucky and then like I'm super jealous, but it takes time. Take it easy. Don't put pressure on yourself. Um, And one last thing that I will say before we finish the, the whole job hunt situation is I feel like take your ego 
your precious ego and put the fuck aside. Because everyone who comes to New York start lower than they would expect. And that's because you don't know people. That's because you don't know anyone. I started as a barista. I was making coffee. I still do it sometimes when I need to. But like, but that then got me a different job. And that got me into food photography. And then it got me to like freaking, I'm working with like big companies now. And that's like so much bigger. And like, and my salary grew and everything grew. But the first few months... I was back. I was. I closed my company in Israel. Um, I had a photography company. I moved from Israel. I moved to New York. I did not start with having my own company in New York. No. I started by making coffee and selling donuts. Because I didn't know anyone. I didn't know where to start. And I wasn't about to sit at home for a few months. I couldn't afford it. I couldn't allow it just to sit at home for a few months sending resumes, trying to do that while I'm sitting on my ass thinking like, I'm too good for that. So if you are offered a job that is a little bit like maybe, maybe you're, that's who you were. Uh, well, I'm showing for my YouTube people, but maybe you were like really high rank in your company, but then you left and you came to a new city, new company, new people, whatever it is, just accept the fact that maybe you need to start a bit lower and grow from there and it takes time. But I know people that just that haven't worked for a few months now just because they're sitting there and expecting to get a position that they had in their other country, you know, in their home country, um, right away. And that's just, again, if you're not extremely fucking lucky or like, you know, somebody you know is the CEO of the company, you can start right away from there. Build your way up and accept that this is going to happen and that's okay. That's how people start their way, you know, like that's how it happens. But you do grow if you do put the work in and you start somewhere and you build it up. Um, and I feel like a lot of people forget and they just come with their ego and they're like, oh, I'm too good for this. And I'm so overqualified. And like, so what? Take the job for now. I, I mean, obviously, I'm not saying, you know, like completely forget everything, you know, and like, you know, go to do something unrelated just if you need to go and do it right that's what i did like i'm i was selling coffee i do like making coffee though. i don't have problem making coffee i feel like i feel like this job reminds me sometimes how much i grew since i came to new york every time i go back there to help out i'm like oh i was there two years ago and now i don't need to now i'm here because i because i want to because i want to help but i grew up so much since then it's such a great feeling that i'm like i can I can afford that. I can allow myself to like go and work one day a week and help them out because, you know, I have all these things going on and I have this free day. Why not help out? You know, and it reminds me a little bit of like all the things that I achieved and still all the things that I still need to achieve because I am still growing. Obviously, when I have like this, you know, my dream life, I won't have time to go and serve coffee to people, obviously. So I still have a lot of room to grow. And it reminds me of that and it gives me the motivation. And that's me just like, you know, find the good. I feel like, you know, even if you need to start low, it's just like, it's just another thing that you'll get to experience and learn. And that's how we all grow. That's how I feel it starts. Um, uh, but yeah, this is, these are my advice about job for today. We have 20 minutes left. We're going to do a uh, five minutes of music break with some songs and then let's see all oh, recommendations and national days and fun yeah fun stuff fun stuff are coming up so let's enjoy some music what do you want to listen to some more powerful women let me see once my computer decides to wake the fuck up um let's see what i want to listen to oh there's so much that i like um so we said powerful women right powerful okay let's Let's go for, uh, uh, uh. I have like 500 liked songs that I really need to like get my shit together and clean up this list because it's way too much. Um, what do I want? Uh, let me see. Maybe this one. Let's try. And we're back. Okay, we have, oh, what, like 10 minutes left. Yes, and still we can go through like the recommendations. 
Hello back YouTube. Oh, there's so many buttons I need to press at once that I just keep forgetting. So hi back YouTube. Hi back those of you who are listening live. Um, yes. So we're gonna go over uh, weekly recommendations. We're gonna. I'm gonna read you a poem associated with uh, Women's Month. And um, what else? What else? Let me see what else. Oh, and the national, of course, the mentions of the national days that I absolutely love. Okay, so recommendation. Let's start with the recommendations of the week because it's um, simple and easy. So um, one thing that I want to recommend is a bar located in Midtown. Uh, the owner is a friend of mine, but that's not why I'm recommending. Well, that's probably a little bit why I'm recommending, but I just, I love the place and I think the owners deserve it so much and I want to help them grow. The place is called Side Door. Um, it's a bar in Midtown, I think on 50s, no, 59. 59th I think 59th street by uh, and Lex um but it's a really great bar and the food is amazing because this friend of mine he's a chef it's his, he owns the bar he also has a Greek restaurant um next to Columbia University um a symposium but both places I really really deeply recommend if you want to go um definitely worth it they have a lot of uh, live music nights they have amazing food they have parties they it's it's amazing and the vibe is really really great and it's right next to a subway so it's really easy to get to so again the uh, it's called side door um what else uh let me see let me see other recommendation oh i do really really recommend you to go to uh photographiska um the exhibit that they have now, my friend went because she, when she was visiting, visiting now, uh, she was visiting the city and she asked me, where should I go? And I told her Fotografiska because I feel like it's, it's, a, it's, it's similar to MoMA because they, well, not really, but like they have really modern type of art, especially if you're into photography and into interesting, they have really interesting works. So um, either MoMA or Fotografiska or both, I really, really recommend you to go to both of them because uh, I think their exhibits are just phenomenal. And I'm not a museum person, like I'm not necessarily like, oh, let's go to a museum when I'm in a different state. No, but these two are just so fucking interesting. They're so freaking good. So I just really like my personal recommendation. If you don't want, don't want to go to MoMA because you've been already, uh, try Fotografiska. They're really, really amazing and they change in their art all the time and it's very contemporary and I feel like it's really interesting. I like, I like it. Um, and last recommendation for the week. So this is a place in a story that I absolutely love and I really, really love going there. It's called QED, QED Astoria. It's, um, I don't know how to call it. It's like it's a, it's a coffee shop, bookstore, venue place uh they have they have everything it's like it's like qed it's a location they check them out on the website i personally go there to to see comedy shows because they're good i love it especially um on saturday nights they have a good lineup usually and then they also have open mics and the, like this the event itself like it's it's really cool like they have a lot of books they have a lot of and interesting books you know like it's not it's like Again, very contemporary, and they give like music lessons there, and they have uh, studios. It's a really nice place. So if you want to see a dope comedy show, it's not free. I mean, they do have free ones, but like I recommend going and trying QED Astoria. Um, for the times, for the few times that I've been there, I was never disappointed. It was it was always good. It's always such a nice vibe. It's a small place. It's a small venue. So if you really want to go, you probably should buy tickets ahead of time because it gets full. Um, but definitely recommend. I can't, again, I don't control the lineup, so don't come to me like next week and be like, this was lame. I don't think it will be, but again, the line changes up every time. And again, I was never disappointed. So um, try, if, especially if you live in Queens, let's just like, uh, you can get there by the N train. Uh, so it's really convenient. It's located in Dietmars. Uh, pretty dope space. And then you can go and eat in all these amazing restaurants before, after the shows. That's, that's what I do. That's how that goes for me. <laughs> Definitely recommend it. Um, 
Okay, wow, we're towards the end of the show. Let's go. Okay, so we're gonna do national days like we always do because today is March 13th and there are a few national days that we can mention. Um, I love this section of the show. I love this, like, national weird days, right? But, like, who knew? Now you know. You're gonna know. I have five to mention. Five? Yeah, I have five. Or six. Six! Oh, six mentions today. And that's not even all. I just chose the few ones that I was like, let's talk about it. Okay, so March 13th. Oh, international. It's not even national. International Every Girl Wins Day. So if you're a girl, you're going to win today. That's, that's a day. Interesting. Okay. Uh, March 13th, uh, K-9 Veterans Day. Learn all about the long history of dogs in the military, police, and rescue services. I'm a dog lover. So, and we have a day to say thank you to those dogs who serve in the military. They don't even do it by choice, right? So, today's um, K-9 Veterans Day. Nice. Oh, National Coconut Torch Day. Okay, I love coconut. For those of you who love coconut, just know that's, that's a day to eat a coconut tart, tort? It says tort. I feel like it's tart. National Coconut Tart Day. Put on your apron and we whip up some sweet coconutty goodness today. Fun. Definitely want to try that. Um, another one, March 13, National Good Samaritan Day. So I feel like this day should be all the time, every day. Um, but yeah, this is a day to be a good Samaritan, to help people, to do good Try not to be angry at anyone on the subway today. I know it's hard, New Yorkers, I know. But, you know, it's a good Samaritan day, so let's be nice. I'll definitely try my best on the fucking subway. Um, <laughs> and, um, oh, okay, two more. So one is National No Smoking Day. Okay, today, let's reach out to friends and family members who suffer from nicotine addiction. So... Obviously, whoever suffers from nicotine addiction and smokes will not listen to you. And they could not care less about no smoking day. But just for you to know, if you enjoy a cigarette, here or there, today, maybe, maybe stay free. It's a national no smoking day. You know, maybe it's a good time to quit. If that's, if that's where you're going for, imagine quitting on national no smoking day. That's an achievement. That's great. That's great. For somebody who quits smoking... Um, it feels like a great achievement. I used to smoke a lot in the army. I used to be a smoker. Like, uh, yeah. But I quit and it feels good and it feels great. I can smell again. It's a great feeling. So definitely if you can quit smoking, even if it's for one day, it's already a success, right? And the last one, my favorite. Smart and sexy national day. <laughs> So March 13 is Smart and Sexy Day. Now, I don't know what about you guys, but for me, every day is a Smart and Sexy Day. And I hope for you too, because why the hell not, right? So today, March 13, we're celebrating all this amazing day. We're celebrating dogs, we're celebrating good people, no smoking, coconuts, um, and smart and sexy people. So yes, and uh, we have really, really, really few minutes left. Um, I want to write, I want to read you a short poem that I wrote. Uh, I want to say recently, but it was like a few months ago. Uh, but the poem is, you know, it's called Two. It's called Two. Uh, let's go, let's go. Okay. Don't be too good. People will use it. But don't be too bad. That's not okay. Don't be a prude. But don't be too bougie. And don't be too mad. Because it's lame. Don't be too smart. They will think you'll, you're a loser, but also not dumb. Have some brains. A simple story about being a woman, but honestly also about being a man. Yeah, so that's my poem for today. Because, you know, I feel like, well, nowadays guys also feel that maybe a little bit because there are a lot of so social expectations from all of us. But I feel like for women, no matter what we do, it's just never good. No matter how hard we try or not try or look or not look or fat or skinny or pretty or not, it, it's, never, it's never good enough, you know? You're either too smart, you're either too stupid, you're either too prude, you're either too, 
underdressed, too drunk or too whatever. It's always too. We're always not hitting the spot right. And I feel like it's something that we all experience day by day. And we always need to prove ourselves to other people. And it gets really tiring, you guys. So um, I'm going to end with wishing us a great Women's History Month. And if you want to learn more, go and learn more about these amazing women that changed history and helped us to be where we are today. Read some uh, poetry and books from smart and amazing women. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the episode. I, ha- I hope you learned something today because I sure did learned a lot today and um if you wanna um, follow me on instagram it's simply vika if you want to watch this episode on youtube it's also there it's simply vika if you want to read some of my poetry it's also on my instagram but soon the book will come out and then i'll have a book um of all the poems that i wrote recently it's uh it's gonna be very exciting yes and if you have any more questions or things you want me to cover next time on the next show in two weeks wednesday 12 p.m new york time please let me know um and now i'm just gonna go because they kicked me out in four minutes um that's it enjoy you guys enjoy your week uh be productive be good um be creative network meet people write read exercise everything bye